everybody. It's getting towards the end of session, obviously. And uh, the Senate majority, thank you, Becky. Senate majority has pretty much stayed on track regarding the first press conference we had with you. We said we were going to make some significant budget cuts. We have. We said we were going to send a spending limit over to the House, and we have. We said we were going to create a fiscal solution. We've sent that over in the body of SB 26. Um, and we said we were going to protect the private sector, which in some respects helping the private sector in this environment is uh, fighting some of the things that might come back over from the House, namely an income tax, namely a fairly egregious oil tax uh, that will tax the only real large producing economy in the state right now. So we're here, we're resolute to stay on our goals. And I think it's important as we have so many options that are being thrown around out there that might make Alaskan businesses in particular, or just Alaskans in general, be a little nervous about the future. Um, the biggest thing being in the income tax, and we've said it bef so before and we'll continue to say it, the only stand thing standing between Alaskans and an income tax right now is the Senate. And we intend to stay resolute on that and produce at the end a fiscal solution that makes sense. It will be mathematically sound. It will be, be the best thing in the state of, uh, best interest of the state of Alaska. It will protect the private sector and allow us to start managing our flow of income well into the future. We can start managing to best practices instead of crisis, crises uh, after we get this fiscal solution in place. The Senate will continue to do business on the, on the floor, though many of our committees, I've, I've heard it described as going into uh, warm storage. Uh, there isn't much reason to be holding committee meetings on personal bills that don't achieve an ultimate fiscal solution. And so we will begin to narrow our fo focus fairly dr dramatically uh, soon after day 90 with our committees. And so I guess that's the, the general statement of where we are and, and uh, the, the rest of leadership is here and I would just ask you to direct questions maybe to the appropriate people or I'll kind of hand them off to them. So if you have questions, uh, let's hear them. Becky? Oh, Go ahead, Becky. Becky Gore with the Associated Press. I'm not sure who the best person would be, but um, Senator Kelly, you mentioned narrowing the focus after day 90. Are there other bills out there, um, priority bills of the governor, sure. priority bills for the caucus? Um, and then on oil taxes, um, Senator Machiki had talked about at one news conference, um, the Senate's willingness to look at the remaining tax credits. Um, is the Senate willing to um, dig into that issue, if not to the degree that the House is, but to come up with some sort of solution on remaining credits. Let me go ahead and first throw to Senator Meyer as the rules chairman. He is more in charge of the flow of bills back and forth between the, the bodies. And then uh, Senator Michiki uh, can answer after that. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, Becky, for your question. Uh, I, I just printed out what we have in Senate rules. And there's a total of five bills, uh, three House and two Senate bills. And uh, a couple of them haven't had, I haven't had a request yet for, for, for a hearing. So um, there's not many bills left, uh, in, at least in the, in the Rules Committee. The, uh, the priority bills that you mentioned, obviously one is the uh, Real ID. Uh, that's the priority of the governor's, not necessarily uh, uh, ours. Um, the House seems to be struggling with, with that bill. Uh, ours is in uh, Senate Finance, and so, um, Right now, we're just we're just trying to see what the House uh, can and will accept, and have that sent over, uh, and then marry that up with with the the Senate bill uh, in the, in the finance. Um, Senate Bill 54 and 55 are um, the changes to the criminal justice uh, 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 Senate Bill 91 that we passed last year. Uh, obviously, that's that's passed this body. Uh, unfortunately, the House gave it three committees, so it's 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 taken a little while. But that that's a priority, uh, certainly of, of ours. Um, and then the uh, deceased public safety uh, officers, um, a lot of support uh, for that bill. That's uh, Senate Bill 48, House Bill 23. Um, 
it's it's currently in Senate Finance as well. Um, I, I'll let the the the, uh, the the chairman talk about that, but I, I don't see any reason why that won't ultimately get over the finish line. Um, opioids is uh, which is Senate Bill 79, House Bill 159, is a priority, of course, of the governor's. Um, and uh, that is in labor and commerce, and I know the chairman plans on hearing that uh, this, this afternoon, and we'll try to get that moving a little bit faster. And then the uh, House Bill 141, I, I don't know if that's the governor's priority or ours or everybody's, but that's that TVEP uh, training. And uh, labor and commerce heard that this morning, and then it'll go to uh, finance. And uh, so I think that's in, in, in a good position as well. So the priority bills that I know of um, that are important to uh, the Senate and, and to the governor are in uh, good shape. Uh, another priority bill the governor's, uh, again, is in the Rules Committee, has to do with the uh, no state employee incre pay increase for two years. And so we're just, uh, I'm just asking them to make sure they have s uh, support for that to pass. And I think they're working on that. And Kevin, if I could uh, jump in, um, or Senator Meyer. <coughs> I sent, I met with uh, Speaker Bryce this morning and we sent him a letter and it pretty much narrows down what we're going to be concentrating on. Um, there's certainly room for negotiation. We haven't heard back from the House necessarily uh, what their prior priorities are going to be, though I think we'll have a lot of agreement here. And if you'd like, I can leave you copies of this uh, letter before we leave. Um, Senator Machicki, you, you wanted to talk uh, regarding the oil tax? Yes. The Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, now that we have HP 111 to process, we have uh, stated that we are willing to evaluate that bill fairly. Uh, many of us support cash credit reductions and reform, and that's what we're going to be looking at primarily. We are not willing to um, increase taxes on an industry that's suffering. In my district, we've had many layoffs. We have an industry that's uh, struggling right now. We want to remain competitive. But we do admit that uh, many of the cash um, credits have been unsustainable. As I often say, the um, not sure that we're able to support folks playing poker with other people's money anymore, but we uh, will be processing that. The um, uh, meetings will begin tomorrow morning. Is that correct, Madam Chair? We'll have joint meetings with uh, Senate Finance and um, resources and uh, we'll begin processing that bill and uh, decide if uh, what um, pieces of that bill that the Senate can support to get uh, it across the finish line. Liz and then and then Nat. Liz Rains with KTDA. The House passed Senate Bill 26 yesterday with contingency language that says it it's only valid if the Senate also passes a broad-based tax and HB 111, the oil tax overhaul, as it passed the House. And so if the House continues with that all-or-nothing approach, uh, how will the Senate respond? Is the Senate willing to walk away from a permanent fund plan this year and take nothing? Well, I, uh, first I'm going to throw this to Senator Hoffman in a moment, but um, putting an income tax in SB 26 is kind of an interesting play because they didn't have the votes to get an income tax out of their body when it was just an income tax. And now that they've put in this other one, uh, they got the one other vote that they needed. So I'm not sure how um, how serious to take uh, an income tax from them right now because I don't think their members still really have the, uh, uh, the where they don't have the numbers to, to support an income tax at this time. But uh, Senator Hoffman has, and Senator uh, McKinnon have been the lead on SB 26, so I'll just throw to them first. Senator Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. President. I still believe that uh, the most important piece of legislation is Senate Bill 26. Um, the, the House has their version, the Senate has ours, and I think the next step is to send that to, the, to a conference committee to work out the differences. Um, uh, the House still believes that that is the most important piece of legislation. The Senate agrees and believes that that is also the most important piece of legislation that uh, we're dealing with uh, this session. And uh, the governor also agrees. So all three of us agree at least that uh, the rewrite to the dividend is the highest priority. Um, the Senate has 
um, serious concerns, I would say, regarding the income tax. And, and the, the differences, um, I think, are, are ones that hopefully can be worked out uh, at, at a conference table um, uh, with the House and the Senate. And uh, um, I think that uh, the Senate should uh, go with an open mind, but uh, we've, we have taken a strong stance on, on income tax and uh, uh, look forward to the Senate uh, President uh, appoint a, con a conference committee uh, in the very near future. Senator McKinnon. Thank you, Mr. President. I will, I'll keep an open mind on SB 26 and go in with good faith to try to work, if I'm assigned on that team, to work on uh, SB 26. But the bottom line is we don't need an income tax. I mean, just the contingency language should be a red flag to Alaskans. When uh, the knob is turned up and you give a $250 increase in the dividend, it is requiring us to tax. And so if folks at home are not paying attention as of yet, it's the clear red flag inside of SB 26 that is actually making it a requirement. So. Uh, for me, I, I'll look at it all, but I, I don't understand how we stand up Alaska's own IRS system to take money uh, from Alaskans and then pay out money uh, on the other hand and then have the federal government do the same. So I, I personally don't believe we need an income tax at this time. We might need one in the future, but our models run. The original bill that we sent over to the House runs with a 1 percent error rate over a 30-year period, I believe, from the actuaries. It's right around 1 percent. And, and you just don't need the income tax. But if, th if they want to talk about it, I would personally prefer that they send us a bill with the parameters in that they want. The public testimony was outrageous in opposition to an income tax um, from a variety of communities across our state. Um, as Senator Machiki said, the Senate stands ready to talk about uh, oil taxes, specifically the net operating loss and cashable credits. Uh, we cannot continue to pay for something we don't have, so we're willing to engage in that conversation. But it's about trust. I mean, the, the House, you know, you can, they, they don't trust the Senate. Uh, I'd like to give them a reason to trust, but we've got to use actual facts and get away from what I call hyperbole or, you know, bumper stickers. We, we've got to look at the numbers and let the actuaries run them. And I, I just have personally a hard time in asking Alaskans to pay an income tax when they're paying a federal tax and then turning around and uh, handing out uh, permanent fund checks. A, a personal property right from some Alaskans' perspective. Nat, go ahead. <coughs> um, good afternoon. Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, you guys are up here essentially saying, you know, we gave you guys a plan on day one or day negative one or day zero, and here we are day 86 or day 90 or close to it, um, and we've delivered um, everything or close to everything that uh, we said we were going to do. Um, and yet, here we are, and it's quite clearly not the end. We're quite clearly really far still, or maybe not really far, but there's still quite clearly a lot of ground that has to be sort of closed between the House and the Senate. Um, is there anything that you guys feel that you could have done up to now to have gotten any closer with the House, um, whether that's through sort of working on a compromise